Hey everybody, this is Emily Karras. Emily, um, Emily has built a stacked ADU. So these are two 800 square feet units. I just want to ask her a few questions about it. And she also has a tiny house on wheels, which we want to talk about all these three things because this is very cool, what she's done on this property. Um, and I should mention the primary house is right here. So this is the driveway. There's a stacked ADU. So Emily, tell us roughly how much this stacked ADU cost to do all in. Yeah, it was about $300,000 for both units from ground up. So obviously we already owned the property, so we didn't have to pay like acquisition costs in terms of buying a property for it. Um, we live here and this is our primary residence and we worked with a program called Back Home ADU um, and Craft3 to offer um, low income or median income housing for folks that's a little bit more affordable in our backyard. We've got a 10,000 square foot lot here in Northeast Portland and this guy is going to be two units um, rented separately. They're um, separately metered from the house but they're metered together so I'm actually going to be covering all the utilities but it'll be wrapped into the rent which will um, be 80% of the median area median um, rental rates or it'll be based off of the tenant's income and they'll have to earn less than 80%, um, so 80% or less of the area median income, um, which for like one person is like $63,000, which is pretty average <laughs> if you think about the Portland metro area. And then two people is like 79, I think, is the, is the new number, I, I don't quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can look that up with the housing and urban development. Yeah. And um, for the top unit, all utilities included, um, for a rental burden of 30%, I can go up to $1,700. It's a okay. one bed, one bath. Okay. And for the bottom unit, it's a two bed, one bath, and I can go up to $2,000, all inclusive of all the utilities. I'm gonna be putting them a little bit less, less than that. I feel like those are a little bit out of range for most of the what I've been looking at and kind of, you're still sharing space with folks. You're still, you know, kind of in a, an apartment style, but you still have some, some yard here. You're saying that's actually, you think that's above the going rate. So you're, is that right? No, I think that just for like, if I, if I, when I look at rental rates, like that feels more in comp, like comparable, less to like an apartment style living, which this feels more multifamily because yeah. there's multiple units here. Yeah. Um, that feels more like you're renting a whole house. that's that size. Comparably. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and so I want to make, and, and I want to make sure it is affordable. Yeah. My mortgage on my $300,000 is like $1,800 a month. So one of these units is going to pay for the financing through craft three and the other unit will then be able to cover additional expenses and, and kind of be cash flow for me. TV question. So yeah. Craft 3, for those who don't know, does kind of like mission-driven ADU construction loan financing for ADUs. What is the interest rate on that loan amount? Yeah, so they offer two loan products. Um, the one that I'm um, signed up with is through Back Home. So we have that agreement where it will be rented to folks who earn 80% or less of the median income. And that is at 3.5%, which in today's rate is pretty good. Very good. <laughs> um, and yeah. then they also offer, let's say you just want to put an ADO on the back, but you don't want to have to worry about renting to people with, you know, a certain income or whatever, or you want to like turn it into an Airbnb. They also offer um, financing at 6.5% to build an ADO. So. Okay. And uh, when you said you did it for $300,000, that's very low. You didn't mention the fact that you're the general contractor. How much would you estimate if you had to spitball what your sweat equity contribution was in terms of a dollar value? Yeah, my sweat equity, I did do quite a bit of um, the work myself of the interior, the painting, the trim, um, doors, thing, cabinets, things like that. Um, you know, I would guesstimate that my sweat equity was probably around 20000 or more. I'm going to say it was a lot higher based on what I know, having done similar projects, but that's humble of you. I'm guessing if you were to hire that out to somebody, they wouldn't do it for $20,000. Probably not. It took me a long time. How <laughs> long did it take you? Um, so cabinets, I've done cabinets before. I love putting in cabinets. So that took me like two days, one for each kitchen. Um, but you know, a crew coming in and I, I it, it also took a lot of prep work on my end going like, what, what cabinets am I going to buy? Yeah. What's my layout for the yeah. kitchen? So I'm not counting that in that, but the install itself took two days. Um, and then- the But but overall, I mean, like we're talking about general contracting, yeah. of managing the framing, you know, foundation crews, all this it's stuff, true. right? Yeah, yeah. My hands-on involvement has been throughout the entire thing. I manage the permitting process through the city of Portland. Um, I- Let's step it up to a hundred thousand bucks, maybe. Probably. Right? Yeah. If you were to hire this out, maybe a hundred. So yeah. $400,000 all in it is still, I would say, very, 
good value for what you've built. Um, so it's hard to know exactly how much you yeah. know, your sweat equity is. Yeah. Let's move on to the tiny house yeah, here. Um, okay, so Emily has also put in the tiny house on wheels, which is not done through the Crafty mm -hmm. program. How much did this whole setup cost all in? First of all, when you did the in, when you did the hookups, how much additional would you say that cost if you had to spitball yeah. for the hookups as you're doing the detached units? There's the water, sewer, and electrical connection is back there as well. So to run new lines out and to put these, you know, like your lawn hydrant and your electrical um, connection, I'd probably spitball it was between five or six grand to get that in. With that being said, I wrapped it into the scope of work of the yeah. trades who did the stuff here. So they were already on site. Yep. They were already running lines. The backyard was already a trenched muddy yep. mess. So I'm not sure exactly what it would cost for someone who's just pulling it from their house. Um, but, you know, I, I think somewhere up to 10 grand could be possible. Okay. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. That's okay. Um, um, and, and if you had to guess the cost for, you know, tell us the cost of the tiny house, the cost of the delivery, the cost of the installation of the tiny house, and the yeah. hookup work, all that, like, just break those down for us. Yeah, absolutely. So let me do some quick math here if I was wanting to go all in price. Um, Probably around seventy thousand all in for placing, buying, having it delivered, getting it moved through this very narrow driveway <laughs> back here, <laughs> placed over here perfectly <laughs> in line with the fence and a retaining wall they have. Um, yeah, with then a little few extra finishes and furnishings and things like that. So this is fully furnished unit, um, and I'll be renting it to folks on a more um, like shorter term basis it's still considered long-term housing because it's more than 30 days but i'll probably rent to people who are in town on like a contract for a few months um you know travel healthcare professionals that kind of thing um and then my return i'm going to start rent at a thousand dollars a month mm -hmm. and it's i'm going to include all the utilities it's a very fuel efficient brand new little <laughs> tiny house yeah. unit so you know you assume that utilities will be maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars i decided 50. to buy 50? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I'm going high. Yeah. <laughs> um, I purchased it outright in cash that I had saved up. Um, and the reason for that is because as soon as I looked at financing, like in order to finance a unit like this, you know, I'm at like 10 to 15% um, of interest rate. And that just didn't make sense from a cost perspective wise. And then if I think about investing, you know, 60 to $70,000 into the, like the stock market and I have a $1,200, $12,000 return every year. That's like a huge cash on cash return when you start looking at return on equity in terms of an investment. So for me, it made sense to plop that money into buying the unit and having it here on site and not having to pay like a, a financing charge, but you can finance it through local credit unions. Um, this is RV certified, so you can actually get like an RV loan or some places even offer tiny house loans, um, but it gets a little complicated about like insuring it and all that stuff. So I just bought it outright because it was really simpler. But and if you had to like kind of spitball your return on investment or years to break even for the tiny house versus the ADUs, have you thought about that? Could you articulate like how you think about those two comparisons? Yeah, absolutely. So like, let's pretend that inflation doesn't exist and that rent doesn't go up. I would have this tiny house paid off in five years, probably, that I would get all my money back. Um, uh, in terms of the tiny house, it's a 20-year mortgage through Craft 3, so I am making basically double the mortgage. Is That's presuming I have 100% occupancy, which who knows, you know, you always have to make at least a 5% adjustment for that. Um, so if I wanted to really like aggressively pay down that loan, which I probably won't because it's at 3.5%, and for me as an, you know, thinking about investments, like I can make more money um, with that money going somewhere else and putting it into like a stock account or something like that um, than the three and a half percent. So it's, it's worth holding on to that low interest rate um, leveraged financing for that 20 years, but um, paying that off, like I would break even in at least 10 years, right? Um, in terms of uh, my financed with that interest, if I were to just basically pay both mortgages into it. But um, like I said, I'll, I'll use that money in a different way and, and be investing it into something else so that I can kind of leverage it in a, in a different way. There you go, folks. That is how you do market rate affordable housing production in Portland under the residential infill project and the allowance for RVs as housing on properties on a single family residential lot. Thanks so much, Emily. Appreciate it. Yeah.